from Carly's Creative Clay. This week we'll be carrying on with our coral reef project. We'll be making some plants and some coral. See you at the top of the hour. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. 
Um, sorry, I've not been around for the last, is it week or two weeks? A couple of weeks, health issues as usual. Um, got my hair cut though, so here you go. Side view. I'm much happier with it short, out the way, easy to manage, so good. Right, where we got to last week, we made, let's see if I can take it off its paper so I don't rustle the whole time when I show you it. Whoop, there we go. Made this rocky outcrop and textured sand. It's going to be the base layer for all the coral to go on and then the coral will be a base layer for all the animals to go on which is why if you've noticed why I've got a lot of texture in there I haven't colour washed it or bothered adding lots of different browns to make it look a bit more realistically rocky um, this is just the standard FIMO chocolate and really it's a base shape to get everything onto is the plan um yeah i haven't baked it also if you've seen my previous videos i tend to bake my projects after each stage and i have been asked how do you know when to bake um really if you're at a stage where what you're adding on can be smudged on quite firmly or you can put a thin layer of um, raw clay. If the next layer is going to interfere with the detail of the previous, isn't it? No, no. Right, there's two, sorry, two different reasons. One is if um, your piece is at a, st a stable enough situation where when you add raw clay to bake clay you've got to push it on quite hard some people will go for bake and bond but i've not ever used it you've got to smush it on quite hard to bake clay um whereas when you add raw clay to raw clay it sticks together a lot more easily so if you've got any fine detail to stick on you're probably going to need to either smush raw clay on and then sculpt the fine detail or put a very thin layer of raw clay over and then stick the detail onto that but you've got to smush it in um, the, so that's when not to bake really um, so technically I could bake at this point but I'm going to be adding lots of fine detailed um, bits of plant life and coral that I've sculpted and I worried in order to get it to have a firm enough attachment I will end up misshaping it um, the other reason why you would want to bake is if you put a lot of detail in and you think you've got to go to another patch and you're going to have to hold it where you'd smush where you put all the detail on and you don't want to smush that so it secures it and locks it into place so you can no longer smudge it but it's harder to um, stick bits to so you've got to judge your project amongst that so this one I've kept raw from last week because I want the stickiness of raw clay so we're on to doing some coral um, I'll give you some pictures up of the coral that we found online um, if you have a run for if you can see it's quite busy um, now if you go through them that'll do um, there is an issue when you're trying to recreate any marine or underwater anything really but especially life forms they have evolved in an environment where the water supports them so they can have these really thin little tendrils that if it was in normal air would 
just fall to the ground for gravity. So you've either got to do a whole lot of wire armatures right the way down to the thinnest bit or you've got to be a bit artistically creative with how realistic you create your things because you're going to be dealing with gravity where the actual life form in the ocean doesn't have that problem okay so with that in mind I started sculpting some bits and I'm going to show you what I did because we're not going to have one of anything on here it'd be at least two so the first thing I did was a stack of kelp and they can get a lot taller than that and a lot thinner than that but again like I said if I go too thin and too tall there's not going to be water supporting it up when it's in the oven it's going to fall sideways so I've done quite a thick clump now I've also put a bit of wire in the bottom there just to help secure it so let's get the leaves for this now if you look on I've got another um, video on my channel which shows you how to make swirly patterned clay because I use it so much I don't show it every video anymore so what I've done is mixed up a dark darker green shades into a stage three swirl which just basically means I've swirled it up brought it back together three times sure. then you're rolling out little balls of it as soon as the cat comes in this room there's hairs on everything even if you don't come up there so you've got your little ball or swirly clay you're gonna twist that and pull so you're elongating a teardrop like so and you're then gonna bring the bottom of that teardrop into a point so that's the shape you got bit wider somewhere down the bottom there up into a point yeah then I pinched that to a thickness where it's gonna hold its own weight it's not gonna flop over so a couple of millimeters half a centimeter that sort of thing now this is a lot easier to do on a glass board or a ceramic tile but we're going to put this wave in it so you're using these fingers and you're going to push either side like that and then bring that up bring that round use your fingers to create that wave then down the bottom I'm going to shape that into a bit more of a point like so just give it a nice tap down to keep its shape a bit more see and it comes up and stays like it so get my pin tool and I'm going to draw a line down the middle technically you can do this line before you shape it into the wave but I find that you can sometimes end up with what you thought was the line in the middle you push it out of center so I like to draw it in after now because this is a model and we're going to get to see the back turn it over and do the same on the other side you don't want to go all the way up to the tip go a little bit down for the start of this line down the middle if you look at any leaf they have this technically if you look closely it's bulging on one side and dipped in on the other but this just drawing a line gives enough of an idea that we're talking about what is it called the stem down the middle of the leaf yeah i don't know 
didn't google that probably should have googled that right so as you can see i've done different sized bits like that now this is the point you're going to put your florist wire in your longest piece at the bottom hold it and you can feel when you're central you can feel when it starts to go off to one side so if you can feel the wire not being central onto the clay just bring it back and pinch it down and push the air out but now that's on firmly and that's what you want yes that's flopping over a bit but you wait till I get the rest of the leaves on you're doing what's called the mid rib oh apparently it's called a mid rib and then the veins are the bits that um the there you go you learn something new every day we're simulating a mid rib kind of so I'm then gonna get a couple of medium sized ones put them either side like that pull this up I'm gonna shape that a bit more then put two on the opposite side like so so you've got four and the one big one in the middle now you can leave it like that but I think it looks a bit neater to put one more on the center there like so I say this oh yeah on all of them I've done that line on either side so then whatever angle that you're looking at this it looks right make sure you've got them pressed together at the bottom firmly I say this a lot with my clay if you can shake it and it doesn't fall off then you're good if you can't if it's going to fall apart from a shake it's going to fall apart in the oven because your clay gets slightly softer before it gets harder thank you it's really easy to do away if you just use your fingers and if you want a tighter one i use the bottoms of sticks from tools it's it's kelp if you look at kelp forests the kelps can grow exceedingly long but again like i said we've got gravity to work with here whereas stuff in the ocean does not much less they do have some they but they have buoyancy the whole rules about how fine and how stuck out these fine bits can be is all different from up here so we've got a couple of these leaves now next thing i'm gonna do is some grass get my greens out of the way right now so this is what my grass stacks looks like and actual seagrass is a lot thinner than that but it looks like this basically now in order to get it so that it's not just one basic color let's get my clay down here we go underneath here right Whoop. I've rolled out two bit two different shades of green pretty finely and what i've done is i have no idea what the name of this shape is trapezoid, trapezoid? there we are they are much nicer than minecraft kelp and i've seen quite a bit of minecraft kelp <laughs> <laughs> yeah a couple of trapezoids exactly the same size as each other you can kind of change the length of them the height of them if you really want some real choppiness but where's my craft knife here we are get your craft knife and i'm going to face it so that the widest side is up the top and the first thing we're going to do 
is imagine a line there if you're worried about it draw it in just gently score it a few centimeters from that top i'll hold it up and show you can you see i've scored a line in we're going to cut just about visible little slices it's only a score it was not a full cut all the way through it's just to make sure that i tell myself don't go any further up that line so i will hold this up once i've cut along to show you let's get a towel and then i can hold them all up a lot easier for you all there we go portable workspace is a towel there we are right so i've got that guideline and i'm just cutting them they don't all have to be the same thickness but these do have to go all the way through now it goes ends up looking like a nice frill but those ends are definitely not grass ends so we're going to need to make them pointy if you break bits off like that which i have done on this several times just trying to lay it back down so that I can get to all of these and they're not on top of each other. Just push it back on like that. Slightly overlap and then push it back down like that. Right, get into where I want to get to. Come along and start to cut little triangles off the top of each of those like so and the more scruffy you are the more actually it looks kind of real so you're just pointing them up either you can either do full triangles so you've got that arrowhead top or you can come along and do a full diagonal into a point like that but chop and change between it all diagonal the other way so that they don't look all uniform and some of them I'll do that with so I start the diagonal a little further down on one side so like that you just get creative just freestyle some triangles out of it all and it goes along pretty quick and again this is another one that I find useful to do when you're foggy brained or really tired just come in and get rid of these flat tops like so point it all up like that there we go so now we've got points gonna do the same thing on the other what did you say it was Trapezoid. trapezoid so long side facing at the top give yourself a slight guideline on do not cut above that come in cut your thick lines sorry let's move this up and out the way a bit more and i come in a bit more central right come in Ooh, that's a bit too thick. Then again, variation is a good idea. You want it? some variation, but 
but a really really thick one is unlikely in grass oh true so just come in it's so quick to do are all of those all the way through all the way through i'm hitting towel liz says good morning all morning liz lovely to see you i'm making sea grass so again we're coming in taking bits out the other quick way of doing it is do all the ones that are diagonal on that side first don't you snap off there you like this and then come in the other direction after see like so the production line quality of it all can be very very quick like that and then we turn it round so it's facing like that and then do the same on the other side I knew I was going to take a point off before I finished right if you've done what I just did and snapped a point off get your point back there it is that one will attach in nicely there line it back up overlap it and then push it back on and make sure it hasn't joined to the one next to it but that's the good thing about a towel is um, you can just come in and fix any snap offs pretty easily they do seem a bit flimsy at this stage but once we got it all together it will be fine so don't just try and pull this off this has had too much smudging onto the tile use your blade to free it up like so here comes the nifty bit we are going to line up every time let's free you up with a blade i'm fed up with you keep breaking just there it doesn't matter because they're going to shore each other up whoop off there there we are it is fiddly making this grass thing but you can make lots of individual sticks and put them together but I find this is more secure we're going to try and lay them on top of each other and line them all up it helps if I don't do that like so lined up then we're going to roll it up and you're only pinching the bit that you haven't cut you're going to let the rest of these leaves fall as they will see rolly 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 you end up with a little stack of leaves tufts of grass if you've got some that you're not happy with how they're laying just use your that did not go all the way through I'm going to use my knife just to free it up and push it sideways where I want it to go so it's not all rigid up in one direction I'm going to use my finger to curl some just fiddle around make it look how you want it to see right so we've got three tufts of grass let's get the green out of the way give my hands a wipe and my knife and my towel because it's so easy to transfer colors you don't want now next up little pink balls that are stuck together now what I'm basing these on there are ones that have a ball shape 
on a very tiny thin spout into the ground. Have we got a picture of that? Um, I might do. It's the one where the clownfish is in. Uh, See those? Down the bottom oh. corner. I'm basing it on that, but I don't think I'll be able to get those thinner sticks with the balls at the end to actually work together. And in some pictures I saw online, the balls are a lot bigger. So I've gone with that. So again, artist interpretation time. So it gives you the idea of it. So skin a blend of pink and white with very little white showing. So it all pinked up a bit. Haven't done it so that the skin a blend is 100% smooth there's still a bit of smudging color in there which actually ends up looking good so you're going to take your Skinner blend we are going to actually go in half like this making sure that you're maintaining your colors so your light is at the top your dark is at the bottom and you're folding along the midline if you fold like that, then obviously you're just going to end up in a mess. Fold it in half again. So we've now got a stick where your light's at the top and your dark's at the bottom. I love a glass or a tiled surface for this because it'll grip onto that backside to stop it consultinering. And we're going to push along like so turn it over when you just start to see it doing that consultina zigzaggy thing push that side back flat and we're going again and smudging now once we've got a decently wide shape with the light all at the top we're going to smudge that down a lot doesn't matter if it cracks because we're going to cut it up in a minute anyway like so you want it pretty thin see very 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 thin doesn't matter if your edges are looking a bit manky that is all fine then we get it, we're going to chop it up into little cubes. So sticks first, like so. That one's possibly, no, it should be fine. And you can see all the way through your sticks have got that thin dark to light pink. and we go along the other direction and you do not want these all to be completely uniform so it's fine just chop wherever I know my hands are kind of in the way but I've got to hold the blade and do this so how's that is that better so chopping it in sit against that and behave yourself chopping them up into little cubes get rid of that scrap again do not throw away your scrap clay there is about a billion uses for it I showed you how to make pots out of it on a previous video take these individual little cubes that are like that and roll them into a ball on your hand and this is what you've ended up with a dark to light pink little ball yeah that's what you're doing with all of them and you will find it a lot quicker if you are able to roll two at a time like so so once you've rolled out a nice little clump of them we can then put them together 
So let's do that quick, quick. Yeah, the time where I discovered to double roll, it took me about a week to really get my head around it. After that, it was fine and it saved me a lot of time. These balls do not have to be perfect shape because again, nature doesn't often achieve a perfect circle. It's usually a little bit wibbly and blobby. Do one more double roll and I put the rest to one side as this would do. So let's pick this lot all up and move it out the way. There we go. I will use it if I need to fill in more space. So face all your balls light side up and just start to push them together. And where the Skinner blend was a little bit streaky. You can get some really interesting markings. I don't know if you can see. Oops, sorry. Give me a okay. There you go. Can you see there's it's got weird little extra bits of pink in the darker pink in the lighter pink. So it turns out looking really pretty if you do that. And we're just going to stack them together. Oh, it's been such a fun week. I've been playing with baby guinea pigs. I got myself a pair of new girls. And they've learnt how to go up and down ramps. And they are a bit freaked out by handling when you grab them. But... Don't try and bite. We'll sit in my hands nicely. And given the choice of taking the brave step of actually climbing up on us to get lettuce. So they are being tamed. We're going from feral wild hogs to tamed guinea pigs. Right. Next up. Let's make some little spouts and those you see all over the place and what I've done is I did a very very loose swirly clay out of terracotta and gold just to give them a bit more interest Let's Sorry, what was that? Again, the swirly clay tutorial. Yep, the swirly clays. All for, is it three stages? Yeah, three, all three stages of it are in one tutorial. It's exceedingly simple on, on my YouTube channel. Yeah, you so, what we're going to do is we're going to start out, let's get that blade out of the way, with some sticks of different lengths. Get your pin tool and you want to go down the middle of them. Take your time with it, spin it around, that'll help it go straight down rather than off to one side, like so. You don't have to go all the way through, people aren't going to be seeing that. Then I take the side of my hand and roll it against it like that and what that does is it starts to open that hole out a bit more because you're thinning the sides out by rolling it like you would with a little like it was a little rolling pin but it's inside a circle and that gives you these nice large openings and you go around and make several of those all with holes in and I've done that process on lots of them.
by the way if you were making stick beads that's what you'd do and instead of pushing it all the way through when it comes out the bottom you can end up with a ragged scruffy opening so you go in halfway and then you turn it around and go in and do the same on the other side and it all becomes neat and uniform so what we're going to do we're starting out with one of the longest ones and we're going to start to go around and stick just the bottom half and tilt out the tops of the tube like so you don't want these all to be the same length because they wouldn't be on the real I think they're called is that like spouting coral or tubular coral something like that but we're going around and sticking them all on and then mix in a few of the shorter ones so the it's like a little they always have this sort of smaller ones around one larger one it seems to be its look But the key to get it so that this does not fall apart after you bake it is getting the bottoms properly secured down to each other. So once I've got them all on, which will be in a moment, just going to put a couple more on. I'll show you how I double check that they're all in firmly. I pick it all up and I start to squeeze around that bottom like so and that makes sure that they're all firmly joined and then after you've done that you can start to tilt them out a little more easy see and we've got another spouting one so I know I'm moving along quickly um, it's mainly because they're not they're not that difficult to do there's just lots of fiddly repetitive stages so by being able to do them up front it meant that i can be a bit quick now thank you see on coral reefs all the time i think i got photos of them are these sort of sticky out ledge like coral I think it's photo two no, let me check photo these? yeah one. can you see bottom the bottom left those big sort of almost sticky out they look like someone stuck plates to the side of the rocks now I could spend ages carving in all the ridge lines on that if you take it but I found if I use um, ochre mixed with a whole lot of white for the more yellowy colour and then add the tiniest touch of brown for the slightly more browner shade in there and then just put in some ochre and swirly clayed it again. This is a stage two. And then you get to just pick the best side that you like and you can attach them on get a blob roll it out and you know how i did the swirls on the um oh, what are they called kelp it's similar to making these lumps except you're just pushing like that okay now up next one of my favorite types of coral it's called brain coral and it can be in a wide circle in a circle shape like that or it can be in a wide panel like that 
and don't ask me what makes it do one as opposed to the other but it does so looks like our cat's joined us nope 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 what i what i'm going to show you is the brain looking one but if you wanted to do the flat one you can do that just literally instead of using a ball of ochre you will use a flat disc of ochre then this is the tricky bit you're rolling out a long thin strand of ochre now what i'm going to do is because you don't want to cover every side of it because one side's going to be pushed against the rocks i'm going to make a flat side because you don't need to do more work than you need to do if that makes sense and covering a side that's not going to be seen is actually pointless so what i'm going to do is come around and start to go in all directions with that one strand you don't want many sh two straight lines you want to even the straight lines you want to wiggle a bit and it doesn't i wouldn't go in uniform directions so i would go around like that i'll come and fill that bit in in a bit and take it back around in this direction put a little wiggle in there like so so you see what i mean don't be predictable it's all over the place is what you're aiming for if they break that's fine um just tack it back together and start again with the broken stick so i'll show you that now so oops it broke tap that back in come back in with the broken bit don't even have to line it up that well it will vanish and off i go again making wiggles and twists i have seen people who have mapped this out they are far better at being organized than i am i find you can freehand this easy enough oops broke it again not too hard to like this i reckon you can probably make any shape you can imagine in any colors you can dream up and it would make pretty realistic corals that's the thing it really is true the only thing that I really think that is going to be almost impossible to recreate is how thin and fine some of the um, little tendrils go that some of the corals use, especially some of the um, ones they use for sieving plankton out of the water. Really minute, fine, hair-like cilia and there's no way that you're not going to snap that that's all i'm saying i just can't see anywhere that's surviving in a normal environment of life don't worry if you're leaving gaps and can see the back of the ball like the actual underneath the little strands that you're making that is why we went for the same colour as the strands. Oops, up here. I try not to overlap, but that can that can totally be a thing that happens. And it all just gets vanished in the confusion of the rest of the piece. Which is why I like making brain coral. So that's pretty covered. I'm giving it a firm push down 
so you can still see the ridge lines but they're not so standoffish that it's all gonna fall off so put this to one side and we're done brain coral we're getting along this one a nice little trot actually I think I'm quite pleased we might get all what I've pre-made done today but I want to put them on so sorry guys if it's a bit on the long side right where was my bit of clay for that one hmm yes I thought I prepped it same as you did with this that kind of panel but what we're going to do with this one is carve out lots of holes using your pin tool because again this is another one of those filter feeders that filter through all the holes so you don't want to get too close to the edge but what you want to do is just to stab around and move around until you've got a hole through there let's do it on the towel and hold it up so you can see so stab around stick to the tile please thank you stabbing around doing a little swirly until you get a nice hole you want to leave little striation lines because the actual coral has that in those gaps they're quite ragged you can pull excess clay out if you want but I find it's easier to not see how I broke that top corner off and that is fine don't freak out if that happens to you all we're gonna do is use our thumb and either and something flat just to tell this it is going back together again and if you just conditioned your clay instead of done it about a week ago that shouldn't happen anyway there we go Can you try and stay in the sorry I'm trying just a little bit. so go back in carry on carve out little holes you don't want them all in a complete straight line or any real regular pattern so just make sure you leave leave enough gap for it to be structurally stable if you take it to close to the next hole you're gonna have trouble if you take the holes too big you're gonna have trouble and honestly this is really soothing to do is sit there poking holes in clay so I really think doing what I've done with it already a coral reef is actually something to do when you're feeling kind of stressed you're feeling kind of tired and frazzled and worn out this is a good project for that because there's a lot of variety in it so you're not sat there making a couple of hundred different dragon scales or fiddly bits that will really get on your nerves and you're not you haven't got something to be exactly lifelike like if you're sculpting a face if you get it wrong you've got to be on your game and in the clay zone for human sculpting for this you really don't which has been nice to be honest it really has so trying to get a bit quick with it like this I know your space in Sutton is going to be holding a craft fair soon. I advise people to go to it. Unfortunately, 
I can't because we're not sure if my family will be attending a wedding in Germany regardless on whether they go or not I'm not I'm staying home looking after the house but that would mean people who drive me to the craft fair and help me with the store will all be in Germany and I need to look after the house as well so I'm passing on this first one but I will definitely be back selling at the next one because I really miss it almost there with this so you can see it comes along pretty quick but this one this craft fair is due to be good by the sounds of it they're going to have more stalls than they used to have before the covid days so lots to do and see there almost there I know this one was longer than the rest of them and a bit repetitive but I really didn't see how I could do it any of it beforehand so once you got to that stage you're gonna go around and just put some feathering in around that edge just making it look like these inside bits Oops. like so don't worry about the bottom edge you're going to be smudging that against your rocks in a minute so it won't notice take off the excess like that and we got two of those do not pull it off your tile like this there is no way that that will not rip up into pieces if you do so you will find once it's ripped you can push it back together again on it on the tile but if you know you're gonna do that why do that so right three more tiny little it's kind of like grass but it's got more spikes to the limbs so we're working on the same premise as we were with that grass kind of what we've done whoops this is the problem you take out too much of what you've already done when you try and move your bit of paper over move these out of the way right it's these ones so what you're doing is you're starting out with a ball you're rolling that ball into a stick with a point like so then you're doing the same thing but on a tiny tiny little bit and we're just going to smudge those on to that stick coming off in various different ways you can either do a three point like that you can come off like that so it's a little more branch like you can go in the same direction so all sorts of messing around with three sticks once you've got several of them we're going to start with a little ball of the same color and that goes firmly onto your tile or your glass board making sure it's stuck down then we're going to gather some of these up I would say around four would be a good central amount like so and we're going to push those onto the top of that ball like that yeah then 
you just start adding them around the outside you can either spin your toe I spin the ball um, again the reason why I've done a couple of different versions of how to make that stick is because you don't want uniform pieces they want to look a bit different from each other you want them at different lengths you want them to look a little different each time and once that outside of that ball's covered then you can really go as wide as you want with it I'm probably gonna go one more there and call that done make sure they're firmly stuck together around the bottom and you've got your nice spiky coral looking bits in purple Whew. right drink before I come back and do this lot of spikes <clears throat> let me show you a different kind of shape I'm gonna do these now you say it looks similar to that brain but it's actually not and it's done very different I'm gonna do one that's a little bit smaller than this <clears throat> You want a light purple, very contrasting. If you're going for a different colour, they come in lots of different colours. Form a rough ball with your light purple. Then your darker purple, we are going to smudge that so that it is out and flat. And again, I conditioned this a few days ago. That's why it's doing all that cracking around the edges if you want an easier life of it condition it with the same day you're going to use it but where I'm going to work this a heck of a lot it will mix the plasticizers in fine you want this to go down really quite thin I would say about a millimeter you can do it with a rolling pin and lever it back up with your tissue blade but pinching is fine by me right that looks about right I'm gonna get the ball put it in the middle wrap this around make sure you're not trapping air bubbles like so then any of the leftovers I'm just taking off we don't need it there we are you can wrap it all the way across the bottom but again the bottom's not going to be seen because it's gonna be against the rock surface little patch that's going to be visible there we go right like so So, again, establish the flat bottom and the roughly rounded shape. Let's stick it to my tile so that I can hold it up and you guys can see what I'm doing. Now, do you remember how on these I scratched through those holes? That's what we're doing on this, but we're going through. I've got orange still on this. Going through the dark purple until you can see the light purple poke and scratch that's why that dark purple needed to be very very thin there we are Oop. like that I'm not sure if you can see that properly yeah and you're gonna go around sorry you're gonna go around leaving a bit of a gap and poke out these little holes see 
how the light purple shows through that's what you want and the same like you did with the terracotta flat sheet try and take it down to the bottom of that ball so it's all the way around and this is to represent a sea anemone they well, one type of sea anemone anyway these little dips are they had a sort of strands in sunken areas that filter the water and the thing is if you look at seawater under a microscope it is absolutely full of microscopic life um baby baby animals it is a very protein rich thing that's why it can support things like um blue whales because there's just so much of it that's why everything tends to have hundreds of babies hundreds of eggs and they do that because the percentage that survives all these filter feeders is definitely the top percentage talking of smart i don't know whether you've seen on netflix there's a film about an octopus a guy that he bonded with this octopus um my octopus teacher i think it's called real tearjerker because octopus don't have a long lifespan but this octopus was a baller man it was attacked by a shark and it ended up wrapping itself around you know the the dorsal fin the one on the top of the shark hung on to that and rode the shark shark couldn't get it because its mouth can't get round to that bit so instead of being shark dinner it ended up the shark was its steed and spent ages just swimming being on this shark's back catching off its energy use did not die to a shark i tell you that so if you're worried about that bit don't worry about that bit the octopus wins they are such smart animals they really are but it's a shame their evolution is that once they have babies they die off to leave the ocean for the next generation the females do it because they use up energy aerating in the young so they just don't eat and the guys get a form of dementia which is actually very interesting in of itself and is helping us study dementia to based illnesses but it me means that then when the babies all hatch out they have not got to compete with adults for food so that's it all dug out and you can see all that pale purple poking through i think it's really pretty but i thought it was a little bit plain so me being me got my ultra sparkly holographic silver glitter now you don't want a lot L less is more on this so i don't even dip into the glitter itself i dip around the sides tiny not a lot and that's what you're gonna go on now i've heard horror stories of people saying their glitter burnt and discolored in the oven i've never had it happen i've used so many different brands of glitter the most i had was one that went slightly slightly less shiny and then you put a layer of varnish on and it all came back shiny again you need to make sure 
is it the correct you, temperature? Yeah. Like everything with polymer clay, you, you can bake it as many times as you want for as long as you want. If you have it at the temperature stated by your packet, which is different for different brands. Um, if it's too hot, you will get cracking. You will get scorching. If it's too hot, it will actually burn. If it's, the oven's too cold, what you will find is your piece will start to crumble. So instead of it being nice and flexible and hard and durable, when you start to handle it, it will crack and fall apart. Now the kicker for this is most ovens are slightly out from the temperature they state they are. Some ovens, they let you actually adjust it. You can take the um, oven knob off and um, adjust the actual thing so that you can dial it back and forth to calibrate your temperature. But it's far easier just to get an oven thermometer. And when it hits the right temperature, then you know it, that's the right temperature. There are things you can do like covering with foil. Um, even putting it on a tile can help with temperature, but you will get a shiny bottom to it. So, you know, go on some polymer clay forums on Facebook. There are loads of them. I'm on about 20. And there's all sorts of tips and support for if you get things that go awry a bit. Right, the last one I've done is kind of similar to these, but with a little bit more thicker and more interesting. So, what we started out with was this. Now, it was not, it's not a Skinner blend. I mixed some, um, violet and some silver to make the silver just slightly violet colored and then i stuck a blob on each side of the ball and brought it out into a stick and it kind of smudged them in together which is what you want right so what we're doing with these Let's double check what I did. Yep, right, okay. Same sort of thing as this, but with more chunkier end bits. So that they actually wedge on a lot easier. And this is another way. Instead of putting the ball in the centre, you can start with a long stick folded in half like so as your center and then just add ones around it so i'm putting next one in there some of these i'm not going to do some off forks too just leave them as individual sticks others I am putting these little forks in like that and it's easy you just add them in and you can really see how I've just taken a pinch of the lavender silver and blobbed it on top of the normal color and then twisted it up And it just brings another point of interest to the clay having that two-tone effect going on right a couple more sticks on that and then we can start to put some of this onto our model it's all 
make sure it looks decent from all sides that it's not just looking good from one I mean if you're doing something like a journal cover or a necklace you don't have all sides to consider but you if you're making models you really do so there we are <clears throat> thicker slightly more stuck out sideways spiky look right so let's get some of these on now move my tile out of the way so these i'm going to start with one of them i'm going to put a bit of a curve in it and it's going to go upright make sure that you push it onto your stone very firmly you're smudging it on properly see and it's all got to pass the shaking test remember like i said if you are able to shake it and it doesn't fall off <clears throat> then you're good oh, i've got such a dry mouth right let's pour one of these in here the wire helps anchor it but you still got to make sure you push it on properly can't short change right let's come in here with a patch of this so you can see where i'm up to so far cat hair i do love them they do get everywhere <clears throat> now i'm probably going to come in and fill up some more of these gaps as well don't forget you've got a back side and an inside go all the way around you want features on all of it like that and bring that out just a little like that so it comes <clears throat> it comes together really quick you do end up with it suddenly not looking just like a pile of mud I haven't planned any of this I'm just literally randomly sticking bits on and that's really what you want to do because that's what nature would have done so let's put this <clears throat> I've got such a croaky voice today put this one on there that's quite a good cover I put this last one up here on the back let's get another one of these in i'm gonna put it down here like so yeah and you're just coming in and adding stuff and seeing what fits your mood let's come up here with this one you see why i've not spent a lot of time on the rock colouring because it's already coming together also you can't colour wash until it's baked you can colour wash before baking you? but you need to make sure you've left it time to really dry out properly if the paint is wet it's got a habit of evaporating half the colour mm. if you've let it dry on properly then it just kind of sits there as the pigment now what i would say is when you add things like glitter or paint alcohol ink um or else mica powder anything you're adding to the surface it's not going to stay unless you varnish it if you don't varnish it you're gonna find that over time it rubs off 
because plastic is not porous. Why did I end up with the wire coming out of the top? That would, that's so annoying. If that happens, just pull it back down again, squidge out the hole so it's not noticeable and try again. I might actually, because that wire is prone to moving, make the hole with my needle tool and then come in like that. So we're, we're getting there, aren't we? It's coming along nicely, as they say. You can put the same thing next to each other. That is an option. They do grow like that. But if you can get away with trying to actually, this is the problem. When you add a lot of stuff, you're getting less space to hold on to, to push it on, if that makes sense. So let's come in here with that bit of green, bit of purple in there. I do love this stage where you're coming along and making it all get together. Still some patches, still got some filling to do. That is absolutely fine. What I also may do is to come in and put some coloured stones. I've got pots of coloured stones like that in various colours. I may push a few of those on some of the gaps that are really showing up too much. But you don't need to. We can get it all done with corals like so. Hmm, I've got another little brain one. Let's put you already got one there hmm down here now I can see I've still got gaps I'm I'm whoops don't you don't knock that out I will be coming in and making a few more pieces probably hmm where can I put this just to fill out any of the gaps that I've got no that does not look right there any of the little gaps that I've got that are too just bare rock because if you look at actual coral reefs they are massively full so I think that's all the ones I've got made so far what do you think Let's come in with a few stone chips. I think these ones are on the opal side. Let's see if I can get any of these in here. Push them into some of this bare clay. Because again, I didn't want to use my stone chips on an area that I'm going to cover in coral. You can get fish tank stones to add to them as well. But um, make sure that they aren't plastic ones that will melt if you try and put it through the oven. So yeah, it comes together quick, doesn't it? It's definitely a thing I like. Right. Now, I'll probably make a few more of these, add a few extra bits in just to fill out some more of this brown 
Um, and next week, we're going to start making some sea creatures. Oh, that's so very Thank you. It Coral is, and it comes together really quick. And you can just free, free flow with it all, which I really love. Um, yeah, I hope you like this video. Um, I hope it was helpful. If you make anything like this or need any help, do share what you've done and or get in touch and I'll give you advice where I can. Um, like, share, follow, all the stuff that really helped build the channel. And we will be back hopefully next week if I'm well. But as soon as I'm well enough for the next episode where I'll start to make things like some crabs and some starfish. Um, some actual little fish to go in amongst all this. I want this busy because coral reefs are busy. So a little bit more time on this. This is awesome. Thank you Liz. I'm glad you all like. Um, I hope you all have a really good week. And I will see you all soon. Okay. Bye.